myself Deepak. Uh, today's topic of discussion is uh, welding. So welding is the process of joining two pieces of metal by application of pressure or by fusion. So here uh, the joining is done by either application of pressure or by fusion. Depending on this welding process is broadly classified into plastic welding which is pressure welding and fusion welding which is non-pressure welding. In plastic welding the piece of metal to be joined are heated to plastic state and forged together by application of pressure. Okay. So examples of this type of welding are forge welding and resistance welding. So these two represents plastic welding which is pressure welding. In fusion welding or non-pressure welding the metals materials at the joint is heated to molten state and then allowed to solidify. Example are gas welding and arc welding. So gas welding and arc welding are examples of non-pressure fusion welding. So this is the classification of a welding, a broad classification of welding. Welding in general is classified into plastic welding and fusion welding. Plastic welding or pressure welding and fusion welding or non-pressure welding. Then plastic welding is classified into forge welding and resistance welding. Resistance welding is again classified into spot welding, seam welding, butt welding and flash welding. Fusion welding or non-pressure welding is classified into gas welding, arc welding and thermite welding. First one, uh, resistance welding. A resistance welding, so from this we can see that resistance welding is a, a form of plastic welding or uh, pressurized welding. Uh, we have already seen forge welding in the previous video. So now in this video we will be seeing about resistance welding which is a form of plastic welding or pressure welding. Resistance welding, in this process the workpiece is to be joined, uh, they are held together and a strong electric current of low voltage around 6 to 10 volt and high amperage of 60 to 4000 amperes is passed through it. When the current passes through the metal, the high resistance at the point of contact raises the temperature at the junction. The mechanical pressure is then applied at this moment to complete the weld. This type of weld is further subdivided into spot welding, butt welding, flash welding and seam welding. So that we can see here resistance welding is further classified into spot welding, seam welding, butt welding and flash welding. So spot welding comes under resistance welding. Uh, this is used for making lap weld. Lap weld means here you can see two work pieces. The one is sitting over the other. So this is this type of welding is known as lap welding in thin sheets. The sheets are held between the metal electrodes as shown in figure. Here the sheets one above the other are held between metal electrodes. These are the electrodes. The secondary current from the transformer is passed between the electrodes. Here the secondary current from the transformer comes and it is passed between the electrodes causing the metal temperature in contact spot to be rapidly raised, uh, uh, raised uh, which uh, leads to welding. The weld at this contact spot is then completed by applying pressure by the electrodes itself. So here first the current is passed through the electrodes. Uh, due to the resistance here temperature rises and the metal melts and then a pressure is applied by the electrodes to complete the weld. Spot welding is used for welding most of the ferrous and non-ferrous alloys. Next is butt welding. This is again a form of resistance welding. In this process the work piece of same cross section are held in suitable clamps butting each other. So here we can see that these are the two work pieces they are butting each other. This a form of joint is known as butt joint. Uh, current is switched on and the contact surface gets fused and joined by mechanical pressure. So this is the finally finished product. Product having a butt weld joint. Flash welding. So flash welding is again the form of resistance welding. In this process, the end of the workpiece to be welded are put together and the required current is passed through the workpiece. Sudden separation of the ends by a short distance produce an arc in the space between the work, resulting in a very high heat. Immediately the current is cut off and the workpiece are joined together by pressure. So you can see force uh, coming here. So force is applied and joins by pressure. Last one is seam welding. Seam welding is actually a continuous spot welding. So it is similar to spot welding but it is continuous spot welding. If the spot welds are made such that they overlap and make a leak proof joint then the process is called seam welding. The electrodes used in this case are continuously rotating wheels. The workpiece to be welded are kept one over the other and are passed between the rotating electrodes. 
the current passing from the wheel to wheel through the workpiece heats the part to be joined and due to the pressure the weld is formed so here we can see a continuous weld is formed between these two metals these are the rotating electrodes next is arc welding so arc welding is a method of fusion welding so uh, earlier we have seen resistance welding which is plastic welding and uh, now we have moved on to arc welding which is a method of fusion welding in which the metal at the joint is heated to molten state by an electric arc a metal electrode is used for obtaining the electric arc between the workpiece and the electrode in which the electrical energy is converted into the heat the intense heat so produced melts the workpiece under the arc forming a pool of molten metal the electrode end is also melted by the heat and it is transferred across the arc to the molten metal pool the arc is maintained by uniformly moving the electrode towards the workpiece and hence keeping the constant gap between the electrode and the workpiece so here you can see a figure of uh, arc welding so this is the electrode that is used with this uh, actually a small gap has to be maintained between the electrode and the workpiece you can see the pool of molten metal here normally the electrodes are coated with slag or flux here you can see a flux coating on the electrode which provides a gas shield around the arc to prevent direct contact of oxygen or nitrogen in the air with the deposited metal the coating also serves uh, also covers the weld metal with a protective slag coating which prevents the oxidation of the weld metal during cooling uh, finally the slag is brushed off uh, after the joints has been cooled uh, next is gas welding now, it is also a fusion welding process in which the required heat is obtained by combustion of fuel gas so here a fuel gas and oxygen so you can see acetylene and oxygen in this case they are mixed together and they will be burning in a, a torch which produces a flame and due to the heat of the flame the metal melts and a pillar road is also provided so the heat is used to melt the end of the workpiece to be joined and also to melt the pillar metal road known as welding road the weld is obtained as the molten metal solidifies Several gas mixtures like oxygen and acetylene, oxygen and hydrogen, natural gas, etc., are used for producing the gas flame. Oxygen and acetylene, oxyacetylene flame, is mostly used for welding almost all metals and alloys as it produces very high temperatures of the order of 3200 degrees Celsius. Next is thermite welding. It is also a form of fusion welding which requires, uh, in which heat is obtained by an exothermal chemical reaction. So, thermite welding is also a chemical welding process. That is important, it is a chemical welding process. Now the gap between the ends of the workpiece is filled with wax which becomes the uh, pattern for the weld. The mold sand is packed around this and necessary provision is made for rice and gear. A preheating flame is used to melt and burn out the wax to dry the mold and to bring the ends of the workpiece to red heat. After which heating gate is plugged. A mixture of powdered aluminium and iron oxide is placed inside a crucible and this mixture is ignited. So here, uh, powdered aluminium and iron oxide, this is the mixture used for thermite welding and this mixture is ignited. The resultant uh, products are highly purified iron and aluminium oxide slag which floats on the top of the crucible. So this is the chemical reaction listed here. The temperature of the molten iron so produced is above 3500 degrees Celsius. So it is an, this reaction is actually an exothermical, exothermic reaction due to which high amount of heat of the order of 3500 degrees Celsius is produced. This heat helps in uh, melting the metal and welding them together. So the bottom plug of the crucible is removed and the mo mold iron is made to flow in the mold. Thermite welding is used primarily for repairing heavy parts and for joining rails, large pipes, etc. So here you can see the mold. This is the wax pattern here. So you will first, uh, first uh, melt this wax pattern so that the ends of the workpiece are at retro condition and then you will uh, feed uh, the a mixture of uh, aluminium and iron oxide uh, through crucible into here and uh, that and that uh, mixture and that mixture is ignited so once it is ignited it produces uh, products that is highly purified iron uh, aluminium oxide slag that reaction being highly exothermic results in the welding of this uh, two metals so uh, this completes welding process next is bracing process Bracing is the process of making joints which can withstand temperature up to 800 degrees Celsius, 800 degrees Celsius and moderately high pressure. A filler metal called bracing solder or spelter is heated to its melting point and allowed, and allowed to flow between the metals to be joined. 
the filler material is generally a mixture of copper zinc and tin so this is important filler material is generally a mixture of copper zinc and tin tin and usually this uh, joint can be set temperature up to 800 degrees celsius applications are parts of bicycle for making parts of bicycles pipe joints subject to vibrations suction pipes in automobiles stove burners saw blades etc next is bracing process the filler metal is drawn through the joint to create a bond in capillary action in a bracing operation can apply heat broadly to the base metal the filler metal is then brought into contact with the heated parts it is melted instantly by the heat in the base metal and drawn by capillary action completely through the joint the cooling solidifies the joint solidifies and the joint is formed so it has been shown here the bracing process has been shown in figure also next is soldering it is a form of uh, joining metals by using another metal or alloy heated to its melting point so here a secondary metal or alloy is heated to its melting point the heated metal the heated metal uh, the, or the, which is a solder uh, flows between the metals to be joined and solidifies so the heated metal the secondary uh, metal or alloy which is heated is known as solder which flows between the metals to be joined and solidifies the mechanical and physical properties of the solder should be close to the metal to be soldered applications of soldering are fabrication works on drain water pipes radiator tubes of motor cars copper pipes of automobiles and uh, wiring joints etc there are two types of solder one is soft solder and another one is hard hard solder soft solder it is alloy of tin and lead with some additives it has some it melts at a temperature of around 320 degrees celsius hard solder is an alloy of copper and zinc melts at around 600 degree celsius now the method of soldering the method of uh, method of heating the solder is by using a soldering iron which is heated by an electric current the parts to be joined are cleaned and coated with flux the soldering iron uh, is then uh, heated to red hot condition a few pieces of solder are put on the tip of the soldering iron and a few drops of the molten solder are applied over the joint so you can see it in the figure now comparison between bracing and soldering in bracing uh, it joins two metals by heating and uh, melting a filler that bonds to the two pieces of the metal. The filler obviously must have a melting temperature below that of uh, metal piece. Filler bonds are more tight to the tightly uh, hold to the metal parts. As a permanent process, a filler metal uh, called spelter is used. Here the filler metal is known as spelter. Soldering is a low temperature, uh, low temperature analog to bracing. It uses another metal or solder which is heated to its melting point. The joint is not necessarily strong or structural but electrically connects the parts uh, with conductive solder. It's a temporary process and heated metal is called solder. Here the metal is called solder. Thank you and uh, wishing you all a happy learning.